All right, hello, friendly folks of the internet. Uh, we're approaching January. It's pretty miserable outside, so we're gonna make some blackfish chowder today. We got a couple fillets. I freed these fresh like two months ago, and they're still looking pretty solid. I just thawed them out. Um, this is tatog, also known as blackfish. I think I caught this back in early November. Like I said, I freeze it fresh and took it out two months later, thawed out. So it looks pretty good. So we're gonna use this and a bunch of other ingredients, make some tog chowder. All right, we're gonna do a quick rundown of all the ingredients you're gonna need. And if you've never caught a blackfish before, here's what it looks like. There we go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh man. Holy I don't know if I had this guy foul hooked or what. No, I don't think I do actually. I think that's just a big tog. <sighs> nice. That's a nice one right there. That's a good tog. That's definitely the biggest of the day right there. Check out this thing. Nice little meat submarine. Nice healthy white chin male. That's a good fish. All right, so it's actually not that many ingredients. We are going a little bougie and we're adding some scallops to this recipe. But other than that, we just got like potatoes, onions, bacon, the tog obviously, and then we gotta make half and half, right? Yeah, so some heavy cream and whole milk. And then uh, some clam juice, and I think that's it. So let's just get right to it. Uh, we also got most of our ingredients, or tried to get most of our ingredients from the farmer's market. So local, the scallops, the bacon, all the vegetables. Uh, even the milk, and we got Iggy's clam cakes uh, because I miss summer and they're bomb. We also got Seven Stars Bakery bread. Uh, they're really, really good to have something to dip in. That's pretty much it. All right, first step, I'm going to get this fish cut up really quick. Um, I'm pretty sure I got most of the bones out of the fillets, but just double check you don't have any bones. And yeah, just cut it up into small little cubes. Also, just a tip, bleed your blackfish before you fillet them. Like, cut their gills and let them bleed out. This is a blackfish where I actually did it, and I forgot to do it on one. Look at the difference in meat. Like, there's just spots of blood in it. I mean, taste-wise, it really shouldn't... I think it's still going to be totally fine, especially in the chowder, but look how much more appealing it looks when you bleed your fish as opposed to when you don't. So don't be a dingus. Bleed your fish. Danielle's going to peel some potatoes. Hindsight 2020, I wish we got the larger potatoes instead of trying to peel the mini potatoes. Yeah, good luck with that. Also, this is our gingerbread house. Johnny has thumbs for fingers, so it came out really bad. Shut up. All right, next up we got these delicious looking scallops. I'm gonna cut them up into like fourths. Danielle's still slaving away at the potatoes. Cut faster! <laughs> trying to improve my cooking skills for next season. That's a big goal I have. Do a lot more catch and cooks since we get access to a lot of delicious tasty fish that aren't coated in stop and shop preservatives all right got our scallops cut got our tog cut this is roughly i think the recipe calls for two pounds i just totally eyeballed it i don't know what the heck that is uh scallops potatoes are still being cut what's the next step what do we need to do we need to start cooking the seafood okay and juice and water, gotcha all right, we're going to start adding everything to the pot. Listen to this plop. <laughs> Those are the scallops. Here comes the tog. That's a lot of meat. Um, we need two cups of clam juice, which we have two cup. This is one cup. Lovely. Where's the second cup? Ah. And then I think we just add seasonings. My go-to is usually Old Bay for seafood, but I am criminally low on it, so that's all I get. It's a sad day. I also have this uh, fishmonger seasoning. Just going for it. Just kind of winging this recipe, man. We also need four cups of water. Ah, yes. I will add that. All right, got the water added. Give this a quick little stir. That's a lot of meat. I think this is going to be a meat-heavy chowder. That's 
that's all right. All right, so while we get this up to a boil, Danielle is cutting the onions. We're gonna get the potatoes cooked separately, and then we're gonna cook the bacon and onions separately, and then I believe we're gonna add all the cooked stuff to the finished big pot, right? All right, update. This came to a rolling boil, and we let it simmer for three minutes, so now we just take the fish off the heat, let it sit. The potatoes are almost done. Now, my lovely assistant is adding some chopped bacon, fry it up. All right, at this point, we're just waiting for everything to cook. We got our bacon browning up, and then we're just gonna add everything to our chowder, it'll be finished. So real quick, I just wanna talk about some equipment I'm gonna be using for next season. Coomer just sent me this reel. This is the Salita spinning reel. I'm really excited to try this thing out. Uh, it's got a power knob, and it's actually submersible, and I'm gonna be using it for both shore and kayaks. You'll see this in a lot of videos. Hopefully I don't get bacon grease that splatters all over it. <laughs> Um, I'm also going to be working with Old Town this season, uh, more to come on that. But you'll see more of that in the future. We'll just finish this up and uh, taste test this chowder. Just added the onions to the bacon right when it's starting to brown. It smells really good. Now we're just taking the seafood out and putting it into a separate bowl because we're going to thicken up the base. Mmm. All right, so we brought this to a simmer and we're going to put in a cornstarch mixture to help stiffen it up. I think it was about a half a cup of the liquid with like two tablespoons of cornstarch. And you just like slowly mix it in. We don't have a whisk, but we have a fork. Now we're at the point where we just add everything back in. Broth is thick. We're both tired, we're both hungry. We wanna eat here, we're starving. We're adding everything back in. Here's the scallop and tog. Give that a nice little drop. Oh yeah, adding the uh, Delicious collection of bacon and onions going right in there. Next, adding the potatoes. And now all that's left is we'll thicken it even more with the creme. Half a cup. Boop. Johnny's yelling at me because I keep going down. I just want to look at the soup. Heavy cream. Look at that. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, stir it up. There we go. It's starting to look like chowder. Dude, this is gonna be some thick chowder. There's a lot of stuff in here. I'm okay with that. All right, we're gonna add some salt and pepper and just let it simmer for a little while. We got some chunky chowder. Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff. Honestly, I would either add more broth or less stuff next time around, but. I mean, I think it, you know, we might want to add some more cornstarch eventually just to thicken up the broth a little bit, but it does look pretty good. Yeah, this is pretty much it. This is pretty much the finished product. All right, first off, here's the finished product. Technically, we're supposed to let it sit in the fridge for an hour, but we're absolutely starving. So we're gonna have some today, and then tomorrow we'll have the actual finished product. And see, I mean, I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference, but whatever. All right, so, get a little bacon, a little potato, a little scallop, a little tog. It's a pretty loaded bite right there. It's piping hot. Damn, that is really good. If I were to just rate it right now, fresh out of the pot, even though it hasn't sat yet, I would rate this about a 7.4 out of 10. The one thing is I've never used like straight clam juice as a base before, so I do get a hint of like clam juice. Maybe next time I do like my own fish stock with like a tog head or something, but other than that, it's a pretty solid chowder and it's not like super creamy, like it's not, the base isn't all heavy cream, like I like how we just use a little bit of cream, so it's a pretty solid chowder, pretty happy with that. Okay. Here's Danielle's taste test. I think I, yeah. I want to dip bread in it. We don't have oyster crackers, but this bread's really good. So I'm gonna do a dip and a sip. Dip and a sip. I like that. That wasn't a dip. That was like a sip and then a bite. But anyways. How about a slurp? A slurp. What's your verdict? This is delicious. I do think it's gonna taste better once it's set in the fridge, but this is still really, really good and I'm starving. I love it. What'd you give it out of 10? Um, right now I'm at like a 7.2 instead of a 7.4. All right, fair enough. Overall, not bad chowder. Didn't really take that long to make. So yeah, call that a success.